Sometimes, one person's trash is another's treasure. Sometimes, it's just trash. On this series, we dive into games gone so far under the radar, they end up in the bargain bin with the likes of YouTuber's Life 2. Yes, that is real, and it is a sequel. No, we're not reviewing the trash, but those that, while maybe not on par with the greats, are very much worth taking a look at. This is Dumpster Dive Reviews. The focus of this episode is The Last Stand Aftermath. I know, more zombies, but I don't care. I like zombie stuff. What I didn't know about this game is it's part of a Flash game series on the PC. Obviously, the series has moved from Flash and made its way to modern consoles. At first glance, Aftermath seems like a twin-stick shooter, but while it has twin-stick controls and an isometric view, it's a little bit deeper than that. Aftermath is, in fact, a roguelite. In a time where roguelites such as Returnal and Hades, it's no surprise to see Aftermath falling undetected. For those not familiar with roguelites, here's my dumpster-worthy quick explanation. They share the mechanic of when you die, you start over. Think old school games without a password and game over actually meant something? But with these games, while you die and start over, it's usually not as bad as a game over. That saved for the genre's bigger brother, Rogue Likes. Like, not light. Stay with me here. Usually, you will gain abilities, quick travel points, weapons, etc. as you keep going through the runs making it easier and not as daunting as your persist through the game. Aftermath has all your basic roguelite elements. Die, restart, build up money, unlock new weapons, gear for every new run. How does this make sense in the zombie setting you might ask? Well, no, you are not a zombie, but there's a neat take on its story. You play as a various survivors in the zombie infested world, but guess what? You are infected. You're just waiting to die. So why not make yourself useful? Each survivor is sent out into the world to gather supplies, fuel, weapons, all while looking into some mysteries to help the colony. So when you die, you jump into a new survivor destined to rinse and repeat the same trek of doom. So let's break it down a bit. Story is very basic and very light. You will not need any prior knowledge to this series to follow along. Typical post-apocalyptic world evil mystery corporation that probably caused the whole ordeal, protect and provide for the colony, investigate a few mysteries along the way. Nothing fantastic here, but nothing disappointed for the scope of what the game actually is. Aside from the typical roguelite elements, there's also survival elements at play as well. You'll need to monitor your stamina, replenish it by drinking water and eating food. Same concept goes for health as well with what I think is probably the coolest twist of the game. While you are infected, aside from the major con of the impending doom, your health gauge slowly drops and gets taken over by the infection gauge. You will need to find or craft antivirals to stave off the infection. And zombie bites will also pump up that infection rate as well. Yes, it all sounds bad, so why is it my favorite mechanic? Because the mutations you gain from the infection can help you out tremendously at the cost of a lower health gauge. You will gain abilities such as auto-reloading when performing a dodge roll, resistance to melee attacks, even thorns to cause bleeding effect on the zombies attacking you. Yeah, they bleed, that's kinda weird. Each time the infection gauge fills one bar, you'll be given a choice to choose one of these abilities, and they stack as the infection progresses. Weapon-wise, guns will range from homemade pistols, shotguns, MP5s, all the way up to M16s. This is where the typical twin-stick shooter gameplay shows, nothing so different to stand out here. Guns, obviously, while fun, will attract the attention of zombies. Where the game separates itself from the twin-stick shooter style is its melee combat. Melee weapons vary from 2x4s, pipes, knives, machetes, brass knuckles, and yes, obviously a katana. Yes, you can throw unarmed punches with a very satisfying sound, I may add. <laughs> Melee combat also takes a bit from the Souls genre, typical stamina bar that goes down with each swing and yes, a dodge roll. 
Quick side note, two of the mutations affect the dodge roll, one allowing you to auto-reload while rolling, and one that just steamrolls through every enemy in the vicinity with a sweet little knockback. Stamina is also obviously affected by sprinting, so like a Souls, you need to keep an eye on your swings and know when to back off and allow it to replenish. Melee weapons have a durability and will break, but don't fret. As far aside from the katana, I was able to craft all my melee weapons with materials found during the runs. Melee weapons have a durability and will break, but don't fret. So far aside from the katana, I was able to craft all my melee weapons with materials found during the runs, which gets me to the next topic of crafting. Nothing major here in the terms of crafting. Basic collect items, experiment with combos it allows, and generate recipes for the next time. You can craft bandages, homemade guns, melee weapons, etc. There are two ways to craft, be it at a bonfire, not a soul style bonfire, more so a hobo bonfire, where you craft a lesser item such as the bandages and whatnot. Then there's the workbenches, where you craft and repair weapons, think Dead Rising Light here. Now that the basics are covered, the overall experience has been pretty solid. Clearly lacking the polish of larger games, it's clear this is an indie title, which isn't bad. Too often people seem to strive only for the latest and greatest AAA titles while many great games go under the radar, all while people's hard work goes underappreciated as well. There is a void left when companies only want to churn out big blockbusters that indie game developers have been filling quite well these years. I won't be rating games on a number scale in this series, as I don't believe number scores are too relevant in the modern gaming climate. Anything under an 8 out of 10 is oddly just assumed to be trash these days. Instead, I will tell you what price point I think the game is worth if it is worth a play. I picked up The Last Stand Aftermath for a whopping $7.50 during a GameStop clearance sale. I found it knowing nothing about the series, literally in their clearance bin. Is it worth $7.50? Absolutely. Obviously, you guys can't run out and pay that. It sits around 30 40 mark, depending on where you're buying it for consoles, currently sitting at $24.99 on Steam. I would easily say this is a solid game for $20. Bucks. I personally would not recommend it above that price level unless you're both a diehard zombie and roguelite fan. This is the type of game that is perfect to pick up for an hour, or even binge runs for a whole day, which I found myself doing quite more than I expected, really. It's fun, while there are a few graphical glitches, the game never did crash and ran quite smoothly. Thank you all for watching our first episode in the series. As usual, like and subscribe if you're enjoying what we are doing. It helps us out. If you have any dumpster finds you would like us to cover, feel free to drop suggestions in the comments or email us. Thank you and we will see you next time.